There are many streets in Amherst. Go ahead. There are many streets in Amherst that that don't have proper bicycle infrastructure and um yeah, I don't know if I could how much time do I have? Should I keep going? I mean, yeah, if you just want to speak for a few minutes and then we can um, also have some more discussion about doing outreach yeah. around this. So uh so when since I've been back, I've noticed that there's there's also a lack of knowledge about the rules of the road when it comes to local drivers. Um, drivers seem mostly unaware that cyclists can use the full lane. Uh, and there's many different various uh, times when it seems appropriate as a cyclist for me to use the full lane. I try not to, but uh, for example, during rush hour, when there's cars coming both directions and they're not giving me proper clearance, then I often take the full lane because otherwise I don't get proper clearance. But then I get honked at it, yelled at and told to get on the, uh, off the street. Uh, other times when I'm sometimes avoiding a pothole or something, or not, or, well, it's not a pothole anymore at this point in the season, but a bumpy section, sometimes I'll take the middle of the road or uh, sometimes going around a dangerous curve, I go in the middle of the road, but it happens maybe one to three times a week that I'm yelled at or honked at by a driver. And uh, so I was wondering, just wanted to bring these issues to the table, but also know what the status of have more transparency online about what the status is regarding putting in more bicycle infrastructure and maybe if the town is willing to make a timeline about when they expect to to improve the, the situation. Sure. Okay, well, thank you very much for your comment. Um, you're welcome to stay in the room as a panelist. We do, Kim, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, Thank you, um, Kevin, for coming. And um, I also am an avid cyclist and I mainly ride my bike and run and walk around town. And I totally agree with all of your concerns, which is why I'm on this. I'm a committee member and we would love to have more people like you on this committee. That's great to hear. I appreciate it. Completely understand and we are your advocates. Um, thank you. So, oh, yeah. are you <laughs> in this so, regard? Thank, thank you, Kim. Um, so, Kevin, I do. We do have a member who's going to leave really soon, and I just wanted to cover a few items with him about future meetings because um, our committee member Marcus he has another meeting at six. But after that meeting, I do have an agenda item just to talk a little bit more about these issues and what potential outreach we might be able to do, because that's been an interest of mine. So, so you're welcome to stay here or go back to the audience or, but I'm, you're invited to be part of that discussion when we have it after this initial item. So, okay. Um, how would he um, um, petition to be on this committee if he was interested? Yeah. Um, well, he can, uh, I can talk to you offline about it too. I mean, there's a forum to apply to be on the committee and so on. And we do have some vacancies we're trying to fill. So and it's thank good you. To be in your community, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And I will just, just for the record, um, Amber isn't here with us who does the minutes, but I do want to just, um, so Kevin, if you can just like give your full name and what part of Amherst you live in. Sure. Hi, my name is Kevin Morgan Rothschild, and I'm living uh, in South Amherst. Okay, thank you. And then, five. and then we're also joined today, Amber, by all of our committee members except for Stefan, who said he couldn't be here. So Joe, me, Chris, Kim, and Marcus, and of course Cooper. So okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I did want to put just about like future meeting availability. Um, I attended a TSO meeting this morning. And they are interested in having a combined meeting with TSO and with TAC and with the Disability Access Commission. Um, I think they're a commission now. And, and it was really, I mean, it's a lot of different people and people have busy schedules and it's hard to find a time that will work for everybody. It seemed like one of the compromises that was talked about a TSO that we'll probably try to do is to have, they would like to have the meeting in person because then people can look at the DPW maps and plans and so on at a large scale, which is something you don't capture on Zoom. Um, but we also realize that not everybody either from our committee or some of the other committees can always attend. 
in person very easily. And so I think they are going to offer a hybrid option, of course. And we'll do the best we can with like trying to make it a good option. But of course, it's not quite as good as being in the room as somebody who sat in on many meetings as a remote participant when most people are meeting in person. But um, so just in general, I just wanted to get the committee's feedback about, and I also was interested, I was interested in having, so they'd like to have this joint combined meeting on issue of um, on the Southeast Street roundabouts. And they'd like to have a meeting in November on that. I was also interested, I reached out to the TSO chair about potentially having a meeting about um, to speed limit enforcement and safety um, with the, where we invite the police chief to come and speak, you know, particularly like at the last meeting, Guilford was talking about, you know, how things have changed now that we've adopted that chapter 90, section 17C that makes the default speed limit 25 miles an hour and how, how people can be ticketed under that and so on. But I thought it would be really good to hear from the police, but I did reach out to TSO just recognizing that the police chief's time is valuable. And it seemed like that might be something that would be of interest to other committees as well, including TSO. So that's not a priority for the combined meeting, but if you, if PAC agreed that that could be something we could lobby for for a second combined meeting. Um, so I guess my first question just to the members here is- That's a great idea, Tracy. Do you like the idea of having a combined meeting on Southeast Street? Yeah. It's a general show of hands. But what do you mean? I don't understand. Uh, so there's a proposal that went to the council about on, the okay. roundabouts okay. Okay. on okay. Southeast the, Street. The traffic pattern in front of the Fort River can't and be- right, right, in front of the Fort River School, which included the proposal- and I can send around links to more background on it, but the proposal included a roundabout at Main Street, Amher, Pelham Road, Southeast Street, and then another roundabout at the Beltertown Road, College Street intersection with Southeast Street, and then also two littler roundabouts at the exits and entrance to Fort River. And there was a consultant who was hired who worked with DPW, and they did an analysis of how that could potentially improve traffic flow. And, we talked about it a little bit at our last meeting um, in terms of like what concerns we might have. And um, there have been members of the council and TSO who've raised concerns as well as members of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And it seemed that it would be good mate, to have a conversation with the, like, the three committees in the room together. And Tracy, it's, will the public also be invited? Um, I believe the public will be invited for public comment. Um, and this wasn't talked about this morning, but I would hope that maybe you could have, there could be public comment at that meeting, but I would hope that maybe perhaps there could also be like a separate time when there could be like a more involved like public forum, including, you know, involving people from the Fort River community and I so totally on. Was so say. that wasn't brought up this morning. So I'm just kind of speaking <laughs> yeah. off the top of my head, but it seems like I wouldn't want this meeting that's like kind of focused on just like going, looking at the engineering and things to also have unless we wanted the meeting to be super long <laughs> like to have to to make it a public forum as well so so do you just want us to go around and yeah so i guess i mean so the question was first like it sounds like everybody supports it um i told tso i would get back to them just with like general availability so right so one issue is that tso they meet during the day and then disability access they meet during the day too so i know a lot of us work um, so what did we think would be like the easiest, like if we were to meet, you know, late or in the day, like, does it have to be in the evening or could it be like 4 PM or 5 PM? Just kind of general. Um, it depends on the day for me. It depends on the day. I'm not sure I, I can give up my work time for this. Okay. I'm sorry. So, um, <laughs> and does you do, does anybody feel like going to a, um, in-person meeting would be a challenge. No, it's no. fine. Uh, okay. So if I mean, like, for example- My only really hard no is between nine and noon on Thursday. And no, I yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would prefer it try to be like a late afternoon meeting, I guess. And I was thinking that perhaps late afternoon might be better for members of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Like for example, if people are relying on public transit or things like that, so. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to move around work and other responsibilities. Right, okay. For something like this as well. And okay. obviously the more advanced notice. Right. There it is for us all. And I think it's good. I think there would be a lot of advanced notice. Um, it's good that we all have flexibility. It sounds like most of us would be able to attend in person. Um, yeah, I mean, so, again, with like, same with everybody. It just depends right, on the day yeah. and all that no, sort of stuff. No, of course. Hi, Joe, do you have a comment? Hey, yeah, just mostly flexible. Yeah, just okay, not in great. the day generally and yeah with the um meeting with the police i've just seen a lot of speeding around town lately like oh, an increased amount. i agree speeding is ridiculous so I especially on my i mean they a lot of joy speeding too which i'd never seen before but there are people ignoring the speed bumps so yeah i would appreciate the police getting in on it well there, i know in in like the springfield area like in in other parts of Hamden County, there's actually been like right, like street racing, you know, where there have been a few like fatalities related to that. So, yeah, you know, especially other, other positive though, I love the parking spots over there. Those are great. I'm um, at, uh, uh, at Kendrick Kendrick maybe, Park. I mean, I think it sounds yeah. like we would be happy if you right. lobby on our behalf to try to get another yeah. meeting around safety in particular i don't know if it makes sense for us to try to get a town counselor no and it could also i meeting. mean that other meeting could also be like on zoom right if we don't have plans like people can participate but it sounds like most of us are available in person if we do something late afternoon i would prefer it to be on thursdays if we can because that's when we meet um but like, are there any, any i'd be thinking uh, i would want a status report because there have been a fair amount of changes in speeding and right and in signage. yeah that's why and i wanted I'm that other speeding, meeting but too. like lower right. speed limits etc there's the um we've got the school safety zone that just went mm -hmm. in up at, or whatever the yes. safety zone up in cushman we've got the town council moving to do the safety zones for arms and arhs so it would be good to sure you know, like do a review of the major changes over the like the past 2018 months mm -hmm. absolutely i mean that was another reason i was asking for it too i agree um okay so just in terms of i will report back to the tso chair andy steinberg about our general availability um are there any days i mean i guess i could go through each day of the week but in addition to thursdays which is my preference just because that's when we do it are there i would think monday's out because that's when the council meetings are um I mean, Tuesday, when, like, or Tuesdays or Wednesdays, are those options for people too? Yeah. Tuesdays or Wednesdays. I mean, it really depends on the right. time and the day yeah, yeah. and no, what of day. Course. I understand. Absolutely. You know. So, okay. right, yeah, I can't commit one way or another just yet. No, absolutely. We get some options because. Sure. I think they will send around like a little like survey about availability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to, you know, just do like a general check in. And yeah, um, unfortunately, great. between like kids' activities and work, yeah. I'm like here, there, and everywhere. So I, I yeah, couldn't right. Say. Yeah. No, thank you, Marcus. Um, so actually, Marcus, before you leave for the other meeting, um, so do you? So I guess one general question I had, right, Marcus, I don't know if the Charter Review Commission has decided to set 6 p.m. on Thursdays as their regular meeting day. It sounds like that. Yeah, it sounds decided. like that. Yeah, that sounds like it's what's happening. Um, and it's every other Thursday. It's but I don't think pace. it's been I don't think it's been set yet. Has it been set it, yet? It's or? pretty much pretty much been set. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, so we can try to meet on the Thursdays that the Charter Review Commission isn't meeting so that you are able to attend both. That would be awesome. Um, um, then, I was I, one concerned about the TSO, though. Isn't that meet? The TSO meets in the morning. Oh, OK. Well, then. The, oh, it used to. Yeah. Never mind then. We're fine. No, the yeah, TSO, yeah, that right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, TSO meets in the morning, but this outreach would be like in, in later. OK. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Because, I mean, I think the other option would be that if you wanted to have meetings back to, like, we could try to move our meetings up, but it I, seems like 5.30 I'm, works pretty well for, like, the members who have jobs and everything, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll just we'll just Whatever. aim to yeah. have it. Yeah. So, Athena O'Keefe, she told me that um, the Charter Review Commission actually hadn't set the uh, schedule for all of its future meetings. If you could just let us know once they've done I will do it as soon as it's okay. done. Yeah. Sounds um, good. And then yeah. we'll just try to work a, a opposite that, you know, but like, mm -hmm. for example, 
like next week is Halloween and things like that. So yeah. we have Thursdays that aren't good. Yeah, I'm actually in New Jersey next week for work. So, so there you go. Yeah. All right. Okay, thanks. thanks. Okay, thanks. so um, our next item, and I wanted to follow up on the, some of the things that um, Kevin had raised in his email. Um, Kevin, I don't see that you did email me back um, about sending out your message, but now that I know I can, I, I will after this meeting. Um, so one of the things that uh, came up is just, for example, that people aren't aware, the drivers aren't aware that one, you know, the whole approach to share the road and also this four foot passing law, which um, was adopted, it went into effect in early 2023. And um, I would like to see the town do more outreach about, over those things. Um, and, but I was wondering too, you know, if there was anything that we thought we would want to do as a committee. I know like, for example, right, I occasionally ride around with my bicycle with the pool noodle, like off the rack to just show what four feet sort of looks like. It's usually, it's actually my pool noodle is shorter. It's usually like a couple feet, but even so some people have told me I shouldn't do that because it's not safe and that I could get hit. And I was like, well, part of the idea is, right, you're supposed to give me the space. <laughs> so, um, I mean, absolutely 100%, like cyclists have the, road, the right to take the lane. I don't think cyclists should be on the side of the road, you know, stuck in a very narrow shoulder or bike lane if there's not enough space, if it's not safe, if it's not cleared. Um, and there are some places, including at UMass, like where I have seen cars trying to like squeeze by you if you're like over to the shoulder. So it'd be safer for me when I'm biking around UMass to actually take the lane too and have, make them go around. Um, yes, Chris. Um, well, the plan on paper for the parents involved in safe routes to school, you know, through the school district is to do a bike safety rodeo in the spring. That's just for the district. But that could be some that could provide an opportunity to educate the parents and families affiliated with, um, you know, the public school system. Yeah, that's about, a good idea. About you know, and then um, I'm even thinking, um, <clears throat> I know that there's like a there's a car free campus day that is targeting that targets high school students. Um, and that could be another opportunity specifically at the high school to be educating the new drivers at the high school about, you know, the width and kind of other aspects of that law. But I have not succeeded in finding anybody to implement a car safe um, campus. Um, I right. am trying to meet with the environmental club, uh, the new environmental club advisor, and again, another me meeting with Talib. But um, those are a couple of ideas to target motorists affiliated with the district. Can't hear you. Hi, Kim, you can go. I was just... um, yeah, I think I am I'm fairly certain. And if not, this would be a great opportunity. You know, the local um, driver's ed places, I'm I'm fairly certain they reiterate the fact and they they participate in the four feet around. They I think they go over that in driver's ed. I'm gonna ask my kid, but um, and I cause because mainly those students are the students are really good, as are the buses. Is this your experience, Kevin? The buses are really great. They always give me space. Yeah, it's for... really other driver, like older. Yeah, I mean, it could be mainly, it's, I mean, the other day I saw New Jersey plates. It could be out-of-state students. Right. Yeah. Um, it could be, um, but um, yeah, if, if I have a moment to speak or we let Joe speak first uh, as well, I can, I'd like to say something, but I'll let Joe, Joe speak first. Or you, fin you finish your points. Uh, just briefly, I, I just I would recommend uh, UMass and Amherst. I think part of their orientation for new students, uh, they they should include it because uh, they're all using apps now. So they would do it. I'm pretty certain they would do it. If you want, I could ask somebody. I was on the safety committee that put the app in, uh, but they would include it as part of their orientation. I'm I'm pretty certain. 
That's a great so, idea. I, yeah, so, yeah, I was so, walking uh, at UMass the other day and that parking lot, I just looked at it. It's just like car after car after car. And I'm like, not any of you really need this car. So it's like a walkable so, town. So, so, jo so Joe, can you tell me what app you mean? Like what? Um, what's the app that yeah, so if you give me a moment. It's, a, it's just a... Uh, an application. Well, Amherst College is putting it in, and I believe UMass has one of their own. Most colleges okay. now have an app that students download. Uh, and oh, I see. App for, okay. Yeah, they use that for their orientation. So oh, for, like orientation uh, apps. Okay, yeah. I, I just wasn't sure what you were meant. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. No, uh, and, But yeah, it should be a part of there because they do all kinds of safety so, issues. I, I mean, yeah. I will say back probably about like over 10 years ago, but I did have a meeting with my boss you know, we were trying to collaborate with the UMass um, people about what they learn, what students learn in orientation. And it's one of those things where there's, and we were concerned at that time about like, particularly UMass hadn't made those very um, like oriented people towards those limited crosswalks. I mean, I don't know, people who've lived in Amherst for a while, like it used to sort of be a free for all across North Pleasant, like students would just cross wherever. And there was some of that too on Mass Ave and, um, and there was also issues with both distracted drivers through campus, but also distracted pedestrians where people wouldn't even like look up as they're crossing the street. And um, and we were encouraging, we were trying to include some information related to that and better safety um, as part of the orientation. And the, the feedback that we got is that there were just so many items, so many topics that are covered at orientation that it would just sort of get lost. And um, so we never actually got much further. Like, I mean, we even had ideas about just even um, marking the sidewalk and the crosswalks, the curb cuts right before you're crossing, like look up and things, you know, which is something that people other places have done. Just uh, if you like, I'm, sure I'm happy to not. just drop a, a short yeah. proposal for TAC and then, you know, do sure. something here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that would be and great. And then try to uh, get them for the next meeting, if you like. Yeah. Well, especially since, you know, I mean, they really took um, pedestrian safety and, and driving through campus very seriously after to, uh, a student passed away locally, right, right here. And another student got really injured all within a very short span of time. So, um, you know, they, they can take these things seriously. I mean, they put in all those wonderful cross, crosswalks on Mass Ave and the bumps and whatever. Mm -hmm after that commonwealth i mean it's actually it was actually part of um the commonwealth ab the ones that go in front of the mullen center they were actually included as examples in a recent mass dot study Good. to show like what an impact they have on reducing and they, they, they have a massive impact yeah. well they're very big <laughs> so yeah i know people slow down um the oh well marcus just left so yeah. um other thoughts yeah so I mean, would would we be interested in organizing as a committee? Like, would we be organ interested in organizing a ride or a day or some additional outreach event? I mean, I remember when I was a college student, we I, we would do these organized rides. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's really realistic for everybody to just still do that, but. Yeah. Tracy, I think Kevin's been waiting a while. Yeah. Go for two. There was a there was an organization that that was doing them in different cities. I remember back in the kind of, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, but I think it's kind of died down a little bit. Anyhow, uh -huh. uh, what I was gonna say was um, I think outreach is great, but I was also wondering in terms of uh, if this town is also considering putting up uh, more signs or just I, I saw Northampton a sign that that I liked that said cyclists can use full lane. Um, I still got honked on that road, but but at least I liked the fact that it said it and made me, you know, it, it was a good reminder uh, mm -hmm. to drivers. I mean, I think there's, it's hard, yeah, I, it's hard to communicate things to people on a mass level, but I think it's, it's a good effort uh, to try to do it. But, uh, you know, as, if there's a sign that other cyclists have the right to use the full lane, more signs like that, and then uh, more, maybe speed bumps in dangerous areas like the one on Southeast Street around that dangerous curve. Uh, if there's a sign there at least that's saying cyclists can use a, sure. um, can use full lane there or for, I mean, 
the four feet rule is great, but I think that something just saying cyclists can use full, full lane would be really nice in places like that. Um, well, and I've been glad to see that they're, they do have those signs now, I think, at all the Amherst roundabouts, because mm -hmm. I have heard about cyclists kind of getting pushed at the roundabouts. So mm -hmm. that's good to say. Now, Guilford, um, so Guilford, would you like to speak? So you guys are acting like you had no interruption in this meeting, did you? Because I lost um, power, um, and I was afraid I lost the meeting, but it seems no, like you we guys were, just we've kept been talking. Fine. Good. We didn't yeah. lose power. Good. All right. I'm good. <laughs> so, Guilford, I do have a question now that you have your hand raised, um, and you can show your face if you'd like. But the, um, I mean, what do you think? Can you tell us a little bit about, I know the town had ordered, like, the share, they had ordered the four-foot road sign, like, the four-foot buffer signs, and then... I know you have a number of share the road signs and like have all the ones that DPW has gone up. Um, are there um, any more that you would put up? Yeah. So all, all the four foot, all the four foot passing ones are up. Okay. Um, we didn't get, um, we didn't get any more signs than that, except for we, we purchased the, the 25 or 25 unless otherwise posted, which are going up soon, or they should be going up. Um, just so you know, it's not even November 1st and the budget for signs, speed humps, pothole patching is actually in the hole by $4,000. Wow. So if you really want to do something like this, you need to put more money in, you need to advocate for more money in the budget. Um, or great. I mean, so I was wondering too, just, you know, does the town ever do outreach, you know, around, I mean, around like the four foot law or I was even thinking now that we have like the new um, back in parking at Kendrick Park. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, right, there had been a letter to the editor in the Gazette that said somebody was like super concerned about roundabouts. And I mean, does the DPW or I mean, maybe some, you know, TSO or somebody they do some we, outreach around like, hey, everybody, we still have back in parking, but this is some video on how to do it. Or for, I mean, for example, I really, I feel like there could be some education too around the roundabouts because I've noticed lately that, um, and maybe it's the worst around the triangle roundabout, but that there's almost no yielding of some of the vehicles. Like, you know, people are supposed to share the road just like they do at like a four-way intersection where everybody takes turns a little bit and there's cars that just zoom right through. And I noticed at the Triangle Roundabout that on the um, on the little medians there that there's now these the placards about, you know, it's the law to stop for in the cross, like for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Um, it made me wonder, one, if there had been any incidences the there. To no, to yield, to yield to pedestrians crossing you. right um but i mean has that been an issue there that those went out recently or do you know we anything? try to replace them and move them around town the oh, okay signs. okay um the the uh, the outreach there is no one in the public works department that has time or no, has, I actually understand. has a job uh -huh. job description to say outreach no, um we do have a person who was hired her name is sam giffen samantha giffen Right. And she's been putting stuff together and she's supposed to be working on doing outreach. She's going to be doing outreach okay. on the town wide. If it's not posted, it's 25 miles per hour. Okay. Um, she does a lot because she doesn't, because we don't sit where she sits, other people sit where she sits. She does more for people next closer to her. But if sure. the committee was to reach out to her and start talking more about doing some outreach, she, she'd yeah. probably be amenable I to doing it. Sure. That's a good idea. I mean, so we could strategize about that. And so she was replacing Brianna. Is that right? She was like a communications Brianna. person. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to leave my video off because um, I'm losing you guys when I turn my video on. I mean, I guess, Guilford, if you're afraid, if you might get lost again, like you could make me a co-host or something, but we didn't have any interruption. No, so. that's fine. I just couldn't. I okay. couldn't. I just no, I'm just saying off. if you're concerned. So. No, I think I'm good now. Gilford, okay. remind me, is it the police that do that do the education um signs at the roundabouts, you know, the electronic ones that say, I don't know, 
take your drugs to Wildwood this weekend or you know, that, <laughs> to throw them yeah. out. Or, you know, that is it the a APD that does that or is that DPW? No, no. The little signs that you see around town, those belong to the the police department. If you see a bigger sign that you see on an interstate, those belong to public works. And we use only use those for construction. Okay. I meant the um, variable, yeah, the variable message signs, right? But they do yeah. occasionally have been campaigns before. You know, I know, I remember ones about like stopping for pedestrians at crosswalks. And so it was like, you know, go slow, stop for pedestrians. Scan the street. Like, scan the street for feet. wheels yeah. and feet. Okay, exactly. Okay. Like something like that. Yeah, maybe so you could ask, um, we could, I yeah. May, I know May is bike safety month, but maybe we could ask for it. You know, we should happening. ask for it. I think especially as it's getting darker too, like it would be good a reminder to just, you know, be aware um at crosswalks its own one. Pedestrians are less visible, bicyclists are less visible. Um and you know, just to be scanning. Scanning. Um I know that last night I was like I had been at this mass dot conference that my work was helping with and I had to leave downtown Boston in my car like after dark. And it was on a road that's got like a lot of, it's got like bike lanes. It's got a lot going on. And it, there's like heavy, heavy vehicle car congestion and like these bicyclists. Oh, and there's also a lot of people on um like one wheeled scooters, you know, whatever those things are called. A, lo yeah. a lot of people without helmets and shared bikes. And it was as a driver, it was completely nerve wracking because there's like all the traffic is backed up, but then you just have these bicyclists and everybody like scooting through too and all these different modes and it was chaos. <laughs> so as I bad as our intersections get, it is not like downtown Boston. <laughs> I think it's by design in downtown Boston. They rely on chaos to keep the drivers sl going slow. Yeah, it's just, it was, I mean, uh, it was crazy. But if I were a cyclist, I don't know if I would want to be like in the middle of all that either. <laughs> So they purposely don't label and do a set of things because they just don't want motorists being emboldened in any way. So there you go. It's an interesting theory. So anyway, so Kevin, well, thank you for joining us. Um, we were going to talk about a few other items, right. you know, related to safety and things too. I will um, share with you the information if you are interested in applying to be a member of the committee. Um, and there is a plan, you know, we do have a bicycle and pedestrian plan. Um, you know, there, it does have, it does identify certain areas for priority improvements, but unfortunately, as Guilford said, and as I mentioned in my email to you too, that like, we don't always have a lot of budget, um, to make some yeah. larger improvements. So. Yeah, I guess what, what, as a, just a resident, I, I guess what I was hoping for was kind of like a, I've seen the plan, but kind of like a timeline and when, that seemed like what was missing to me, you know, when when some of those objectives, uh, you hope the town hopes to fulfill them. I think, yeah. What, what, what were you, what, Kim, you were nodding your head, <laughs> shaking your head about. It's a long horizon sometimes, unfortunately. Um, it's all about money, Kevin. As yeah. You... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so any of the larger improvements, they they pretty much rely on grants, right? Because yeah. our municipal budget for roads and sidewalks is not that big. I like the oh, idea a, of trying yeah. to figure out a campaign for more signs. Yeah. So like who manages the budget? Donation campaign for more signs that, um, you know, that there'd be a way that, you know, it's kind of out. I, I mean, lobbying the town council too, fine, but. I could imagine that, you know, we could hit ten or fifteen thousand dollars amongst people who care about this stuff to try to do some of the more heavily trafficked bike routes with and, signage. And I mean, occasionally too, there are um state grant programs, yeah. right? So Mass Dot mm -hmm. had a grant program to give out those, or they were giving away those four foot passing signs, for example. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, uh, the Amherst DPW applied for a bunch and through like a leadership role in that. I'm yeah. I have a ton of experience. Um, not yeah. a lot on my a lot on my plate otherwise, but I would be happy to chat with you about yeah. you know who to meet with and like how to get something like that up and off the ground. Yeah. We also guess... have a huge network of families that are wired around biking and cycling for or cycling and walking for the schools. 
Right. It's sort of a number, uh, like yeah. a good place to start for. I guess I'd, I'd also like to know just how does the funding, like how does the funding get allocated? Who who decides how much funding there is? And then yeah. Yeah, if we need to apply for grants and we just go that route, that's fine. But if there's a question of uh, yeah, understanding how the money gets allocated, that would also answer some questions. It's a combination, right? So there's a committee, the Joint Capital Planning Committee, that they look at requests beyond like regular kind of maintenance requests. Um, and they start meeting early in the year, and then they they make a recommendations, you know, about what um, what bigger improvements will be um, funded or not. And then there's also the regular budget; it has to stay within a certain percent increase per year, and it all kind of comes together. It's like a budget process that goes on for like a number of months. So, if Kevin wanted to start that conversation, would he meet with Kathy? Who would be the best person for him to if he wanted to meet with somebody on the capital? Um, the joint capital camp committee so they're not going to be meeting again i think until like january or something because they're looking no but just to have the conversation yeah. the interest had a right would be kathy and i and i think kathy kathy is the chair of the kathy, kathy. Shane, shane is the chair of the um joint capital planning commission and um and i will say too like so one thing that tac has looked at right is we have the bicycle and pedestrian plan and we've talked for a number of years about like prioritizing what you know what improvements we want to see first, um, and we still do that. And we can have a conversation about you know to update that list. Um, but it really does. I mean, some of the projects that we've been lobbying for or supporting, like it really does take years to get them built. So we're actually in a good. It may not seem that way to you, but we're Amherst. I feel like we're in a pretty good place right now in terms of that there have been a number of bigger improvements. Like for example, a big improvement was approved down near Pomeroy Lane on Potwine, like Potwine and um, near Long Meadow Drive, like on One Sixteen, where they're going to have like islands and slow down the traffic and things like that. I think it's going to be a huge safety improvement there because there's bus stops on both sides of the street. There's currently no crosswalks. All of that's getting added. I mean, that's a big improvement, right? Um, they're also talking about doing a roundabout at Amity and University. You know, there's a number of other projects. So um, there's always more projects than we have resources. And so. when they put in the new roundabouts, are they talking about putting in integrated bike lines, lanes into the roundabouts as oh, well? Because, no. well, we want to keep the, go ahead, Kim. Bikes can take the lane in all the roundabouts. Yeah. And that's, I, like, I, that usually and, is around each of the roundabouts. And by design, right, we want to keep the roundabouts. I think that um, one lane roundabouts are much, much safer than two lane roundabouts. In addition, two lane roundabouts, you actually need to have much more takings and it just makes it bigger and cars can go faster. Um, so as Kim said, I mean, ideally, um, cyclists should be taking the lane there. But I, I think a lot of our roundabouts, like the one at University and Fearing, for example, for people who don't feel comfortable biking through the roundabout, you can also go on the path. So, and that's been built into some of the up. other roundabout projects too. Joe? I was thinking about uh, low cost signage near parking might be helpful. And with mm -hmm. businesses, that might be just one way to increase the idea. And then, yeah. I don't know, would you get any funding from um, the, what is that, Complete Streets? Would, would that fall under it? Or I don't know, anything from MassDOT? Yeah, MassDOT has some project, yeah, has some it. funds available. Like Guilford, are there currently any Amherst um, safe, you know, shared spaces, shared streets and spaces grants or? There are none right are now. There, okay. And now I know too that um, Mass DOT, right, they were offering rapid, you know, flashing beacons to um, communities. Did, yes. did Amherst apply for any of them? No, nah, we didn't think you guys needed them. You guys are rich. <laughs> right. Wait, who are us guys? You're, you're us guys. I don't know. Yeah. I live right. in Hadley. Oh, oh right. Stop. I just work here. No, <laughs> we we applied for four so Okay. Four nice. But they they had quite a they had I think she said they had over 300 applications. Oh, okay. Well, you know, so last time right when they did them they a few years ago they were giving away those speed limit signs for school zones and originally they were only going to pick like they were only going to give away like 50 or 70 of them or something but then they gave away like over 100 or 150 because it was so popular they basically met the demand so 
I'm hoping if they had 300 requests that they will like try to fulfill as many of those as possible, not say, oh, sorry, we ran out. So, so it's baby steps, Kevin. That's all we can do. But I mean, you're welcome to join our committee at any time. We could also have conversations with you offline about like working on these issues too. Sounds good. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Kevin. thank you. Thanks, right. Kevin. Have a nice evening. Appreciate it. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Have a good night. Okay, so let's see. Um, so next on the agenda was safe routes to school. Um, and so I wanted to just take a moment and, and Chris may have more to, to add to just about that the, um, the I Walk Day, the International Walk, Bike and Roll to School Day was quite successful this year. Like in the end, over 150 students participated. It was popular at all the elementary schools. We had Pelham participate as like walkers um, on Harkness Road, which they were a little concerned about the safety of that. Um, and But it was great to have Pelham participate as well. And I don't know, Kim, did anybody from like the high school environmental club get involved this year? So, I mean, that's something we could aim for the one in the spring. Um, but it was great to see. Yeah, I think um, we just need to think through what else. Maybe Kim, you and I should chat too. Like, what could the high school do for the high school? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, um, you know, that the high school kids do for the high school. But and yeah, I, I was excited about that because we lost the platform of Debbie Westmoreland's Friday email, but yet we still exceeded. Um, you know, we had the the best turnout that we've had. Yeah. So how did that happen? Well, so we worked really hard with the principals to do, um, you know, a one-two punch of every Friday that most principals at the elementary schools still do an email. Right. Yeah. So they were sending out the link to, si um, to sign up. And then they did a robocall um, the Wednesday before. And, and we made sure that they sent out the link the Friday that so they would say in the robocall, you know, go to your email. This is where the link is to sign up and we'll send it out again. And so um, a couple of the principals even sent out the link after the robocall. Right. So it was great. It was just very thorough working with the um, the principals. But, um, you know, I still think that there's more that we can do. And there's some, there was just a hype factor that I don't think was there as much because we didn't have the Debbie Westmoreland thing. So we have to think that through a little but bit. But I think that I know I talked to Kathy Aldrich, who's the secretary, like the principal secretary at Crocker Farm. And, mm -hmm. um, and she said that she did a lot of robocalls. And you could tell, you know, you could tell that yeah. that had happened. Yeah. Um and it was really nice too, like um, the Amherst schools were like one of the few districts in Hampshire County to even participate at all. So like in Western Mass outside of Springfield, Springfield area, I think there was like one school out in the Berkshires. There was one up in the Hilltowns in Hamden, Hampshire County. There was Greenfield schools participated. I think, oh, there was an East Hampton school, but I mean, that was it, you know, so it's like. I think that we have a good relationship with the Safe Reach to School program and with our coordinator, Tori Howley, who's mm -hmm. willing to come out here a lot. And so we just have to other build that. Are and... that, um, that we, um, we lost our coordinator for the bike safety rodeo. So we were planning through the Family Resource Center to do the bike safety rodeo in May. Um, and that person, Dwayne, got um a, a different job in the district so we don't have that um but we did finally get a meeting with dr she um and that's happening this coming monday so that's going to be a big deal i think um and i'm just going to ask her flat out to assign somebody to make the bike rodeo happen we'll see if she does and if she doesn't um, you know, my plan will be just to go directly to, um, I think I'm going to ask the middle school. I'm going to ask um, Ben Coblin, the PE teacher, and I'm going to ask the interim principal there if they will take it on for the year because wow. it's been pretty hard to get the middle school to have a project. So that's my plan B. 
Um, yeah, we did, and we did have great pictures and so on. I can, um, I did share them out. The Amherst Indie asked for them. I sent them to them. They did a little blurb. I also sent them to the current. You know, I think I shared them with Scott Merz back. But I'm happy to send around a link to it to TAC members if you're interested. Um, and then I did want to just uh, this morning TSO was talking about the school zone, the proposed school zones for the middle school and high school. Um, Guilford, do you want to give like a brief update on that? On the what? On the school zones for the middle school and high school, like just like you were telling TSO, right? That you said Jason was working on we, them, we, and yep, they were sent to us. We're working on them. We'll, we'll just work through them. Cool. So That's one great. one one comment that came up at TSO meeting is that you know it was suggested that with the high school, you know, it's a lot more of a safety issue just because there's so many students who cross triangle, but that it wasn't necessarily as much of a safety issue around the middle school because there's a four-way stop at the middle school yeah. driveway and that a lot of cars are stopping there. But I still do feel really strongly that we should still create a school zone at the middle school as well. And just encourage, um, I mean, I'm sure the people who live on Chestnut would say that cars speed on Chestnut. Yeah. It's so just to, It is also just to create the climate of saying like, hey, this is a school zone, slow down. So yeah, I'm a big fan. So Guilford, when do you think that that will come back to uh, the council for consideration? Is there a time frame? Um, I hope by the end of the year. I mean, it's just, um, we're just trying to wrap up. We got several projects still kind of going right now. Okay. Guilford, you mentioned that there's not any money already and it's November. What does that mean for a school zone? Would we be going to safe routes Grant funding is a way to to fund flashing beacons for those new zones. There, there was some money put in the capital plan by a citizen request this year. I think it's a I can't remember if it's 110 or 60. I think it's 60. 60. Think. Yeah. It's the 60? Okay. Yeah. So there's 60,000, which is not that much, but we'll see what we get out of it. Okay. It should be enough for like the school zone. So, I mean, the school zone signage, a lot of times, isn't it mainly the speed limit signs? And then sometimes there's like an end of school zone sign. Do you have to do a lot of other signage? Uh, I think the request was for flashing ones. Oh, yeah. Well, so. But the, the request, I, th I mean, my take when I've talked to the JCPC people about it is that there is some flexibility about, you know, what makes the most sense. The citizen request was actually for variable message speed signs at the elementary schools um, for the school zone areas. I know sometimes there are those like school limit signs, which in incorporate variable message signs, but particularly like at the elementary schools, if we already have the other flashing signs, I'd love to be able to use those and not have variable message signs, like not have to basically discard those and get new signs. It's uh, I mean, the way I read the JCPC budget item is there was some flexibility. There is, but there's they're close to six thousand dollars a piece. Right. Yeah. Um, do you put you put two up at the middle school? You put two up at the high school, or you put four up at the high school? Um, Wait, are this those the speed limit signs that just say like flashing when those aren't six thousand each, are they? Um, the ones we've been buying are around six thousand. Oh wow! So they just for... during the programmed time. That's so like... six thousand dollars. Well, we also have we also you can also access them remotely. Mm. So like I can sit here and log on and see the signs and see what they're doing. Okay. Um, I can go in and change them right now. I could make it like they were flashing all the time. I can make them they're not flashing. Um, I have people who do that, but so I wouldn't really mess it up. Um, sure. but. Um, the signs are a little different than they're not just there's more to them and it's just how they're made plus they're solar powered versus being electrically wired so there's a little bit of charge for the battery and the solar panels and we tend to put them on sturdier posts than what some people put them on because we have a population that likes to challenge things that are fixed in the world um college students uh yeah yeah Guilford, what's the pro um, 
the situation about putting a sign on triangle, I saw just from transcripts afterwards that there was some question about putting a flashing school zone sign for the high school on Triangle Street itself. So the issue with school zones is, is the school technically is supposed to own property on the street you're putting a sign on. And the, the field is not affiliated with the school. <clears throat> it's the town. The high, school, the high school actually has no frontage on a public way except for Mattoon Street so, and yeah. Chestnut. So I had a question about that because when I read the, I mean, that's why I emailed the TSO, but when I read the 2022 like mass amendments to the METCD, it didn't sound like there was a requirement that they be that it have to be like adjacent to the school property. But is that is that in the MEUTCD? I didn't see it anywhere. It is. And there's yeah. supposed to be a crosswalk in the area too. No, so but I little... was I are you sure that okay. I don't think that that's in the latest amendments. Well, um, if they if Massachusetts didn't amend it saying you don't need it, then the federal one says you do need it. Oh, the federal one says you do need it for crosswalk. Okay. So we, right. we will go we'll go through it and work yeah, it out. Yeah, no, no. Out. I just yeah, I understand. Okay. And I mean, part of some... sorry. Go ahead. No, there's just some latitude. I feel like part of the problem at the high school is the um, it's not it. it it's the intersection, is it whatever, Triangle Street, but that turn. Mattoon and Triangle. Yeah, because because Mattoon is, could be a problem. I mean, it should have a better crosswalk there, but it's really turning there. It's that intersection is really chaos in the morning. That, it, it really is chaos. Worry after school well, just I mean, about. I guess I'm just thinking through. Could we go back and get the council to, and find somebody to introduce a proposal to create a safety zone on Triangle Street that's separate from a school zone because it can't be a school zone. There's there's nothing for a safety zone. Safety zones are for our daycare centers or right something like that unless you want to take over one of the college houses and well so hopefully you guys will find that there's you, what we're saying or tracy what you're saying is if massachusetts didn't adopt the more liberal standard then guilford you're saying we're stuck with the federal standard which means that we have to have property adjacent to the street N not necessarily that's okay. we just need to go through and work it out um, yeah no i just feel like I mean, the point I was just trying to make when I emailed TSO is just that that, that mass dot guide from 2021 like predates the 2022 mass amendments to the MEUTCD and the amendments had changed some of the requirements related to the school zone. So, um, and so some of them seem different. And when I checked with Safe Reach to School, they had never heard of the requirement that there be like a marked crosswalk in the school oh, zone. Interesting. So. So I was just I was just trying to understand like where that requirement is from. It is yeah. listed in that 2021 guide, that Mass Dot Procedures for Speed Zoning guide, but as I as I said, right, that predates the latest amendments. So okay. But we've we've already done it. I mean, there's no crosswalk. Yeah, yeah. No. There's no crosswalk in the Fort River school zone. Right, there's sure. no crosswalk. Well, there's one in the Crocker in the Crocker Farms, they have it. And Wildwood has a crosswalk, but Fort mm -hmm. River doesn't. Right. Sure. Okay. So, and one of the things um, that came out of, of the TSO discussion this morning was the idea of both installing the new, um, creating new school zones for the middle school and high school, but also when looking at the times of the school zones, also looking at the... Um, the time for the elementary school school zones as well so so i think i mean right guilford you had said that you would reach out to the um, schools about it to um talk so to that's them the about. question of whether or not to extend the time that the lights are flashing in our current school zones yes yes okay 
I did actually have a quick conversation with Ben Harrington, who's the assistant facilities guy. I haven't spoken to Rupert yet, although I did speak to him last year. Um, Rupert was okay with it last year quickly, and Ben seemed totally fine with the idea of extending those times this year. But um, I will go, I can go back, or or I'm assuming that that's who you are going to talk to. Yes, we talked to, we'll talk to Rupert, and the, they want to have a bigger discussion. I mean, the council was talking about having him flashing when you have uh, sporting events and when you have plays after school or when you have events after, I mean, so there, there is a bit of, there's a bit of, um, we got to come to a line consensus. Somewhere. So, I do, yeah. so are all the ones that we, are all the ones that are currently installed at the three elementary schools, are those all like solar powered? Um, or, they are. Or some older, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, uh, actually the one, the one on East, the ones on East Pleasant actually are the oldest and they may right, not okay. be, but I think they, right. I think one is and one isn't maybe. So they're not solar powered to that they need to have a connection to like the external electric. Power. But I think, yeah. I think they, we've, we've placed them all because they've all been hit at least once. Oh, or twice. got it. Okay. And can, do you, do you know off the top of your head when those are in effect? Like when the school zone periods are for the elementary? Uh, no, uh, okay. we, right. we, we adjusted them. We did adjust them recently at the beginning well, of the school had, year. But they also adjusted, I think, right when this elementary school time shifted, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, and then those, Gil Guilford, could we use, reuse those? Because Wildwood's closing. Not anytime soon. Well, a if, you, years. if you put the school zones in effect now, they'll overlap. So you you would need something. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we'll we'll actually have four spares when yeah. they close Wildwood. It'll be great. I don't usually have that spares. Be, I mean, especially if we, we have that many roundabouts in front of the Fort River campus, maybe that there's justification to put True. Mm -hmm. even more up in that area. Anyway, everybody, you know, to, to I think I've said this before. I don't know if I said it to you, but that was the worst place to choose to put the school. Yeah. You got to um, get over it, Guilford. <laughs> Lots of people in this community need to get But now you it. have that new study with the roundabouts. So. Well, people are going to go crazy. It's really what's going to. All right. I'll just, you push my button. I'll tell you the whole story. All right. You get, you get, wait, starting, you get 55 seconds. Oh, what? So Don't cut him off. Go my ahead. my bet is we're gonna. So we we've, we've never been allowed to cut into the com East Street Common. It's a sacred. We're not supposed to go into the common. One day we we actually put some extra pavement in there. One time we paved the road to give the buses a little extra room. Oh, you would have thought we had taken a baby out there and killed it. But <clears throat> you know that that was the that was the outcry. But what's going to happen is everybody's going to look at the at the roundabouts and say no. Oh, sorry, um, Joe. Sorry, to yours. <laughs> Didn't. Uh, so, um, so what's going to happen is everybody's going to say, just widen the road and put turn lanes in and stoplights, and that will be probably just as good as the roundabouts. But the problem will be that you actually don't have any stacking room to turn into the school. Mm -hmm. So, it's not going to be stacking the room. Can what stacking room mean? Stacking room is where cars line up to wait for those signal to turn so they can turn left. Oh, into oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I so understand. That's, there's not going to be enough room. Joe, Joe has a comment. Isn't a roundabout just in general flow better than a traffic light? I'm just curious. They, they generally do. And, but then the, the one thing that flows really poorly, the worst thing in the world that, that flows is a roundabout next to a traffic signal. Yeah, yeah that, makes sense. that sounds like a nightmare. So that's kind of how we went with four roundabouts. It was to, yeah. and then we, we've already seen when we, we put in the temporary traffic light at the school entrance and exit, that was supposed to be a full on, and that, that can function as a full on traffic light where it, it turns red, green, yellow. But when we had it going red, green, yellow, the people who were heading north on Southeast Street 
would see the green light behind the red light and run the red light at the school driveway uh, so they could get to the green light at Main Street. Right. And I don't, I've had four of her parents tell me it doesn't work very well to get out of the driveway now. Yeah, they all hate I it. mean, the lights are all flashing all the time. Like, all they do is flash yellow. Is that correct? Or they're... They, they flash so, red and yellow, yes. Red to oh, the they flash red and, and yellow. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they were supposed to work as a traffic light, and right. they were tied in to work with the Main Street light. But then to make the Main Street light and the driveway work properly, you have to let the driveway exit have a green light to turn left and right. But then M Main Street had to have a green light on Southeast Street so that the traffic could flow out of the driveway and go into Main Street and go in one of the three directions they needed to go. Or else they stacked up in this small little area of 100 feet, 150 feet. And that's all you can get out of the driveway would be 150 feet of cars turning right. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't. So, but it is didn't. there any concern that if there's so like all these different roundabouts in like quick succession that there'll be like backups? I know that came up at our last meeting and I do see that it does slow, like it is slow around triangle, like at certain times of day. Why is it slow at Triangle? Uh, why is it slow? Because not everybody isn't taking turns. You need more education. That's what I think. But... No, when you go look at it more in depth, when okay. you see it's going really slow at Triangle, look to the right towards Kellogg and see if the line, if the North oh. Pleasant Street is backed up all the way from Kellogg traffic light all the way back to the roundabout. Because that every time I've been there, and I made a point to keep looking, is that when I see it going the slowest, it's one of two reasons. One, it's just overwhelmed because there's so many cars going in three directions. That's what I've seen. And two yeah. is, is that, and two is is that people were making mostly a right to go down North Pleasant Street, but Kellogg and Amity Street, those lights are what stop, and those are all backed up. This, mm. this afternoon, it was when the pedestrian to... hits it to cross. Wait, where are you talking to Amity? How did Amity get in there too? Oh, you're saying at the other. Okay. So there's 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 three there's there's a roundabout. There's a light at Kellogg. There's a right a light at Amity Street and a light at College Street. Yeah. Right. College yes. Street doesn't back doesn't cause that much of a backup on the slide, but Main Street or Amity Street and Kellogg Street can back up the roundabout. Because if they're not working or a lot of people are oh, wow. calling for a light, it, mm. it backs up all the way into the roundabout. Oh. And then it will back up down the street because it's all tied together and it needs it needs to work a little better. How's it, so have there been studies of the traffic flow like downtown about how to improve it or no, we just, just we haven't had we haven't had money to do it, so we haven't done okay. it yet. That seems to be mostly like on Fridays or holiday, you know, holiday weekends and whatever. Well, in, in, in pre-COVID, I always thought that like one of the worst stretches of street was on, you know, South Pleasant Street between College and Amity Main Street. Like it would just be like bumper to bumper. You wouldn't be able to move hardly at all. But I haven't seen it backed up like that as much anymore. <laughs> Have you noticed, um, like with the change on Boltwood, like has that changed the traffic much? Um, a little bit. <clears throat> Joe, Joe has his hand up. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, and in dropping uh, my kid off in the morning, um, you know, Lincoln Ave into Amity, a lot of people have been bypassing the that traffic that you're talking about, Guilford, and um, that be that seemed pretty dangerous because there's a lot of kids walking on the street and then there's people racing down Lincoln Ave with, uh, you know, terrible potholes there. So wait, Joe, so what, um, what part of it are you talking about? Well, what I'm saying is, so the, so when it's backed up like that by the roundabout, um, okay. I just noticed people are, people are cutting across like side so streets more often. Are they going now. on like Fearing or McClellan, like that kind of cutting through? Yeah, well, McClellan into Lincoln and then, okay. and then Lincoln in or, the morning. Or it's North Prospect on. Street. Like sometimes people cut yeah. on North Prospect Street. They're always concerned about that or, okay. Yeah, and when they get to Amity, that be, it's like kind of a dangerous left and right turn there. Right. Uh, for like 10 different cars that are waiting. Yes, agreed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, Amherst is actually, if you it's just look at what's going on, Amherst is at the point where it's got to um, start adding lanes or it just needs to be just got to live with a gridlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we've talked to we've talked to UMass about putting another another exit from instead of going out to Governor's Drive to North Pleasant Street, we've talked to them in the past about coming out and going towards 116 and putting an interchange there, so people can go out and get off on 116 and go north or south. Um, that's a lot of money, but we're we're really. And we're back to money again. Amherst has to realize they got to spend some money on this stuff or else it's really not going to get better. Mm. Well, thanks. Um, so, it, so, so just on a smaller scale, so the Kendrick Park, um, North Pleasant, it seems like it's pretty much done. Is that right? Yeah, there's a couple more signs that go in. It's okay. more painting. Um, but mostly it's done. What about the bathroom? Isn't there a bathroom that's supposed to go in? It's not my project, so I don't know anything about it except that they're doing it. <laughs> oh, is there a bathroom going in? It's there it's supposed to be one of those fancy like a Portland loo or whatever, one of those oh, ones. Okay. But those that things are those cost as much as a house, some of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but um so so one of the things is Kim, I was curious because you had mentioned previously, and I've seen it too, some that people who live in the um, rental properties along North Pleasant, that section of North Pleasant Street, they would drive the wrong way. Are you still seeing that now that the back and parking uh, and as, stuff is in? Uh, not as much, but okay. I, I, um, no, not as much. So I mean, that was that was one th installed the um. Thank you, Guilford. The um, one-way signs at the end of the driveways coming out so you can see it on the park side from the driveways of the rentals you can see the one-way signs now I think they have it figured out and with the, all the parking that's there too I haven't it has not been I haven't seen um, incidents yeah and it really narrows it up nicely like in terms of slowing down the traffic and things yeah um, really and I, I like how the bike lane and now has like the bike logo like on the grounds. Mm -hmm. But one thing I had noticed there, Guilford, on on the bike lane, um, particularly like near Triangle, but then also I noticed it on one of the other bike lanes around town is that it's like full of leaves. Um, I guess that's you know one of the features of us having lots of street trees. But does the DPW ever like clean off the leaves off the street, or do they all blow away eventually, or what happens? <laughs> I don't know. Down, downtown, we go through and we'll sweep. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's... So because, because I noticed, like, you, I mean, like, a number of the bike um, logos were painted on the bike lane, you know, at Kendrick Park, but one of the closest ones to Triangle, it's just, like, there's, like, a curb there and things, and the wind is catching the leaves, and, like, just, you can't see that logo, basically. You need to... I was just curious. Like, so some people might yeah. not even know for sure that it's a bike lane, and so... At that intersection too, like currently there isn't a sign on the do not enter sign that says like except for bikes. Is that uh, something that's gonna get added? Bike lane that has like a bike going that way. Well, it's covered in leaves. I mean, uh, is there gonna be any signage as well? Like a little sign, a cheap sign, not an expensive sign. So there's nothing cheap. <laughs> well, uh, you know. So there is supposed to be a sign there that says it's bike, bike in, cars out. Good. Okay, good. That would be that would be really helpful. Um, I was wondering about about um just generally all the parking everywhere. I mean, who? How does that get enforced? On what that? do you mean? Because there there are plenty of people that park there all the time that are not. Um, don't have parking stickers. You're saying and, uh, adjacent to Kendrick? Yeah. So is that is that not being enforced, oh, Guilford? Do you know? Like, there's a sign that say go. Oh, is I don't think there's a kiosk there yet, Kim. Is the kiosk no. in yet? Like the parking kiosk? The, the kiosk are there. Parking enforcement oh. is supposed to be going through and doing it. Okay. Okay, right. good. Okay, thank you. Well, the kiosk wasn't there like a few weeks ago, so it just got added, I guess. But, okay. 
Cool. Yeah, the kiosk, I, I, I touched it Wednesday. Oh, all right. I bought dinner there. <laughs> oh, cool. the food truck? But if you're buying yeah, dinner, got... isn't it isn't it like 6 p.m.? There's no enforcement there after 6. You must have been having early dinner, right? Um, well, I was getting it to bring home, yes. Uh... Okay. okay. Um, yeah. And our, and so it seems like a lot of the other projects are wrapped up. Um, they're, they're wrapping up. There's still a little, there's still a couple paving things to do. Okay. Um, the chip ceiling is all done. That's all done. Uh, we have, uh, wa the water, the wa water main project still going on. We have a sewer project in South Amherst that's going on. Um, we have the bridge rail project, which should start cr cranking oh. up here shortly. Um, oh, and wait, so and I was in, I was on South Pleasant Street today downtown, and there was some kind of like project. Is that a, a DPW project? Like some of the street was closed. Is that a DPW project or is that related to the new building? That's Eversource. Eversource is oh, connecting okay. the, oh. the new electric line they brought up from the substation. They're mm -hmm. connecting it to the downtown um, loop of electrical uh, transformers and vaults they have. Oh, and um, so I was going to mention just to TAC members. So it was like two weekend, two Fridays ago was a Friday, and they had the um ribbon cutting at the Pomeroy oh, yeah. Village uh, roundabout. Yay. And I saw footage of Guilford walking across the street at the crosswalk. Yay. Yeah, it was actually, that wasn't planned. <laughs> they didn't <sighs> say Guilford walk across and we'll like, <laughs> no, I was talking uh, to I was talking to the contractor who parked at Mission Cantina. Oh, uh, okay. And I was walking back across, and I looked up after I waved to another contractor uh, I knew, um, and I realized that there was a camera crew staring right at me. And yeah, you you there was, a, there was just a little glimpse of you. So, and he he spoke at the event too. It was very nice. Good. And there were some like, you know, big wigs from Boston there too, like just talking about partnerships and stuff. That was nice. So and they actually gave us money, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay. Don't talk about it, just use it well. <laughs> so that's great too. That's great to hear. So um so Guilford, I don't know if you were still in the TSO meeting towards the end, but um one of the TSO members was asking about Heatherstone. Yep. Um and so how's Heatherstone? I do not believe that the drivers, I do not believe that it's something we'll use in the future. Um, the way things are going, um, <clears throat> people, it's, it's just not being accepted that well and it's not being, um, it's, it's not really working out. So I guess that Amherst will be the land of raised crosswalks and speed humps oh. okay so you do so are you i mean are you attributing that to um like i don't know could you easily or echo hill seems like the place where you could easily pull together a neighborhood meeting and do oh. more education and you know just try to get a little bit more buy-in or is it not really the echo hill population that's you know, disabusing the. Um, they're they're quite a divisive group. I don't think they. You have a group of young people who have moved there that want changes and sidewalks and amenities, and you have a group of older residents who like it the way it is and want it to stay the way it's always been. So, so the Heatherstone, they were like mini roundabouts. I haven't been there lately, um, but they were the mini roundabouts and they were done as a pilot project. And yep. they, aren't they, are they like on top of the pavement? So you could like take them out, right? Like they were, so we'll they just, were, if we, they're if temporary. We just, if we decide to take, if we decide we're going to take them out, we're just going to take a milling machine and mill them out. Oh, okay. I didn't know if they were like actually, like they weren't part of the pavement, do you know? Like I thought that they might no. just be like bolted or something as like a test no, case. No, they're or something. part of the pavement. Oh, okay. But, oh, all right. But if we don't want them, we can just mill them off, and then they'll be then the pavement will all be flush. And then, and how many are there? Are there two or three? Three. Oh, okay. So, I like them. So, do you think that they'll be up for the winter? Are you gonna leave them? 
or uh, how, how's that know. how's the pilot I, going i think uh i think some voters are i don't know the voters are reaching out to their counselors and i don't i'm not really sure how it's going to go i guess the school buses are having a little issue going through um and that might be because we made them a little bit bigger than they were originally but people were complaining they were too small so we made them bigger um so you know that people will always complain right like, uh, yeah, i guess yeah, but i guess i guess the school buses are rocking a bit through there so i don't, um, I, I don't think pbta has started going through there again oh interesting i'll have to ask them but the rest of the improvements there were done like um i mean that island was removed right and the sidewalk was added and the sidewalks and in stuff. Do people, are people complaining about the sidewalk? Some are. Oh, brother. Wow. Tough crowd. Some, some people are complaining about what, about, some people think we're idiots and we just don't know what we're doing. Um, uh, so per yeah. personally, um, it's kind of neat because as I get closer to the end of my career, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe we should. Nah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it's and not uh, everything's not for everybody. Yeah. No, it's true. Well, and there's many viewpoints in Amherst. I mean, in and it does and seem to me if the right, the primary purpose is traffic calming uh, speed calming so that is happening correct well except for the people who are driving backwards through them i'm sorry what they're going the wrong direction through them there there are residents who will who when they get to the splitter island they cross over into oncoming tra traffic lane and then Ugh. go through the round roundabout backwards because we didn't put splitter islands on the other side so oh. you, can, you can do that. I can tell I need to go visit it. I haven't been there in a while. Yeah, okay. and it's it is it is tight. I mean, you have to slow down to get around it. Yeah, that's the whole purpose. And before it was, it was bizarre. I mean, people would fly by you. Well, and, I mean, the, po the potholes were doing a lot of traffic calming too. So, I mean, there had been a study done at UMass. It was a student study, like looking at the um, the roundabout at the north end of campus and just like the bicycle movement through that roundabout and the bicyclists would do some crazy stuff but it's it's like disappearing disappointing to hear that drivers are doing the same so but but then and, and it's really great i mean guilford as you were saying right that the pomeroy village roundabout was the first one that you that the dpw did in house and i think it came out great and so it's encouraging you know that dpw is doing some of these great things and i i mean the um the pot wine, you know, project, one, the 116 project there, I think that's going to be fantastic too. And there's some innovative stuff there as well. So you guys are doing a lot of great things. And I think it's worth trying the mini roundabouts, right? Because they've been talked about for a lot of neighborhoods. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The pilot project. Good on you. <clears throat> so. I mean, what more can you do? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like come up with a solution. It's also a solution that can so. be changed. And and it is actually right. achieving what it's supposed to achieve. It well, that's why I didn't know if they were just it, like, but... um, you know, bolted, yeah. like temporary, because um, no, they're not bolted. Uh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. It's, as I'm... it's asphalt. It right. was meant to, but we can just we can just mill across it and it'll just mm. be milled pavement, and then we'll just so leave it just, milled. Just I know that it's almost seven. I want to let everybody go and have dinner and enjoy their evenings. So, but Guilford, um, just one question about the roundabout at Amity and Lincoln. I mean, at University. Um, have you heard any updates from the state on that or when do you expect to hear? I'm not allowed to talk about it. Oh, you're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> what? Doesn't it oh, also I mean didn't didn't the town apply for a grant? And so what happened with the grant? But like well, that's all I'm public not, knowledge. I'm not allowed okay. to talk about it. Oh, okay. But I think part of the problem now too is that housing development that's gonna happen there. Well, and there's some public hearings about it and stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Because I think part of, yeah, because the access around that, I think is a little confusing. And, and I think there's also like sidewalk issue, like 
But I thought there were some really good additions, like in the plans that you showed us, not I the original the memo, and the fact yeah. that like that new housing project could have a new sidewalk, and that we're going to have additional crosswalks. And I mean, there were a lot of elements that were added there. Um, I re I was just asking in part because I know right that the that the council never voted on that, right? Because no, it, it's because there was a grant, there was a grant pending, so it went out to TSO and it didn't come back in. And so I was just curious about. Yeah, TSO is supposed updates. to take it up soon. Oh, okay, got it. All right, well, thank you. Thank yep. you for that, Gilford. Thank you for hosting and for sending out the links. Thank you. Bro. I thank hope you. Amber is back with you soon. So. She was Sorry. back today. Oh, good. Right. Good. Thanks, Gilford. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Nice. All right. Nice so I'm assuming, I mean, hopefully our next meeting will be the joint meeting, but we'll see. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.